Hey guys, I'm all back again. This is my three weeks review of the Motorola Razr Plus. So week one is just enjoying the phone, appreciating the nostalgia, the novelty factor, and just enjoying flipping phones in general. Most people don't really need a flip phone, but it is a pretty cool throwback phone if you had a Razr back in the 90s. This year, Motorola add a lot of functionality to the front screen, which makes it much more useful than prior years. You can basically use any apps on the front screen, check notifications, you can text, make phone calls, and pretty much perform about 90% of tasks. The other 10% of the time, you may see some weird optimization issues. For example, if you're trying to play a game on this tiny 3.6 inch display, you may encounter some issue because certain games are not meant to be optimized into a tiny screen. For example, Pokemon Go is meant to be played in portrait mode. So that's in just the way certain games are designed. So it's not really Motorola's fault, but just in general, the auto display is nice to have and you can use it. I spent a whole day using it just to make a point, but not everything's perfect on the auto display. Folder screens are so expensive in general, despite the tech being around for at least three years or so with many generations of folding phones. This year, Motorola made some big improvement by including IP52 dust resistant. We do take regular smartphones for granted due to the fact that they, they don't have any dust on the front screen. But if you use any folding phones in the past, for example, the Z Flip or the Galaxy Folds, those super expensive phones get dusty really quick. And this year, Motorola takes a big step forward by reducing some of the dust. It still lacks water resistant though. So the Galaxy Z Flip 4, it does offer water resistance, but it's missing dust. Motorola has dust, but it's missing water. I actually would prefer dust more. It's on a day-to-day -day basis, you will see the dust accumulate pretty quickly. And it's not every day I need water resistant. I don't bring these phones into the shower or the pool or anything like that. And since folding screens are so expensive, phone manufacturers have to make minor sacrifices here and there just to make the price affordable. So with the Moto Razr Plus, you are getting a one year old chip, so Snapdragon 8 Plus Gen 1. It is not the best battery that money can buy. It is not the best camera. Despite all these minor sacrifices, it is still solid enough for most people. If you did not know all these specs and just pick up this phone and use it, it performs just as well as any other flagship today. So I wouldn't worry too much about all these behind the scenes specs. Works great just for normal everyday life, whether you're working, playing, and everything in between. First week is just me getting used to opening and closing the phone, getting used to a different style of using the phone, figuring out when to use the outer display, when to use the inner display. Nonetheless, it's been super fun. You can even flick it with one hand if you want to, just like the old days. Though I get nervous doing it because I might accidentally throw it away. I always recommend using two hands, but if you feel like flexing, you can flip it with one hand, but slightly obnoxious. And the good thing is if you only have one hand available and don't feel comfortable flicking it open with one hand, you can just always use the outer display and that is a big improvement compared to any of the other flipping phones in prior years. And I absolutely love that. When I use the Galaxy Z Flip 3 and 4 and I hated having to open the phone every single time and it gets really annoying really fast. And it gets to the point that I just leave the phone open the whole time. I know that might be a sin for owning a folding phone, but I just hated having to open the flip every time. Just to answer any text messages or see notification, having the phone open is just easier access. And once all the cool factor wears off of holding a folding phone, that becomes a very annoying feature pretty quickly. And ironically, ironically, with the Z Flip 3 and 4 in the past, the best feature is actually putting the phone away and using it less. If that's what your goal is to reduce screen on time, reduce a lot of time just on your phone, maybe having a less usable outer display might be better for you. But if you're a power user like me and just like having quick access to the phone, Responding to things quicker. I like a full functional auto display. It just makes life so much easier. And with the auto display, it is perfect for vlogging as well. You can see a preview of yourself when recording videos, which is pretty cool. And there's a lot of nice things you can do with it. You can place this on the ground, stop dancing, making TikTok videos. You can put this phone under the sink and make tutorial videos of you. Uh, I don't know, cleaning the drain plug, do some maintenance video on YouTube or something. Or you just prop this phone on a table, start eating and do some ASMR videos of you eating your food. It can be your food vloggy. So lots of flexibility here with the folding phone. You can use the 
preview screen. Therefore, we can take advantage of the main camera that Motorola has to offer. So lots of good stuff and fun ways to use the phone. You just got to get creative with it. And week two is just diving a little bit more into the phone after getting used to all the cool factors. And once that we're off and just actually find out whether it's practical or not. I mean, it has standard features such as dual screen mode that any smartphone, any Android phones have these days. I don't think Apple have a split screen yet, but just in general, I like the idea of split screen, but I never really use it. Too small to do dual screen for anything. I don't know, I guess in the past, if you want some use cases where I can see doing it is maybe you can have GPS on half of the screen and music on the bottom if that's your thing. But I personally like to have one big screen. The only time I find dual screen to be helpful is on a computer. That way you can take advantage of two large screens. But with these tiny phones, even on the folds, I don't find it to be that useful. Multitasking is cool and all, but... I find it more distracting than anything. So I like to focus on one thing at a time. Camera is actually not that bad on this phone. I know I wasn't really expecting much going into this phone. Samsung, Google, Apple, they always make the best camera. So a lot of people already know that. But this phone takes solid pictures for normal everyday people. It's not going to be the best thing in the world. Videos is okay, maybe slightly under okay. But I actually install the Google App APK. So you just do a Google search and just look for Gcam APK. You can go that route if you want. Just make sure you're downloading it off a safe website. And the video quality is actually really good using the Google software on this phone. I was pretty amazed. It's significantly better than the regular Moto app you use that to record videos. So here's what it looks like on the standard Moto camera that I used in the early days of uh, doing these vlogs. And towards the end, and I started switching over to the G Cam. Um, video quality is night and day. So I've just been using the Gcam app ever since. Although I cannot get the photos to work on the Gcam app. So kind of a shame there, but either way you can still use your regular camera. Remember to leave any questions that you guys have below or topics if you're new here. I make daily videos on this current phone that I'm using and, and I do a recap at the end of the week like I am right now. So remember to like and subscribe so you don't miss out on detailed daily videos like these. I'm going to cover this phone for a few more days before I switch over to the Google Pixel Fold, but I get a lot of my ideas and topics by looking in the comments and answering all the questions that you guys have. And just jumping back to the review, this phone hands down is a way better experience than the Galaxy Z Flip 4 just for the outer display alone. So I'm pretty excited about it. It does cost a $1,000 though, so it is still pricey in the green scheme of things, but I've seen people get great deals on this phone ranging anywhere from 500 to 800 dollars depending on trade-in deals so you guys can take advantage of that i think it is definitely worth it let me know how much you got your motorola razor plus for if you've gotten it already but in the grand scheme of thing one thousand dollars is less than the prior list price when this phone first came out a few years ago it was 1200 dollars or more so now you're getting a more refined version a better phone than a few generation ago and it's starting off at a lower price so we're trending in the right direction there in the third week of using this phone, I discovered desktop mode. I always find it to be gimmicky on the Samsung depths and even using the phone link on the Google Pixel 7. But I find the Moto version to be a little bit more robust. I only played with it for one day. I just find that it has better integration to computers, easier to copy and paste file. At least it's much more intuitive. I'm pretty sure you can do it with the other options as well. Just transfer files from the computer to the phone. I only use it for one day, but I find it pretty cool on the surface. I try to integrate it more in my daily life and see if it makes a huge difference or not. And I spend one day just having it on just as a giant always on display. So I can see all my apps, I can see the notification when I come in. So I can interact with my phone all day long just using my computer without having to touch my phone, which is pretty cool. Until one thing I do want to point out is swiping away notification does get a little challenging using a mouse compared to just swiping it on the phone. So that's the one downside of using it on the computer. And I get all my ideas and inspirations from the comments below, such as this desktop mode. I wouldn't know to look into it if um, people didn't ask about it in the comments. So if you guys think of anything else, just let me know. And I don't really claim to be an expert at these phones. I just pick it up and use it like everyday normal people are trying to see if things are easy to figure out if, or it's not. What do I need to Google? What can I just do on my own? So if I have questions, I will look them up. 
I just speak from the perspective of how intuitive it is, just looking for the path of least resistant and just trying to use as less effort as possible. It's just in general, you're picking up a phone, you want something that's easy to use, not a lot of friction, and you want to see how easy it is to figure things out. And if, if I'm experiencing any issues, I do want to point it out just so people can know and see. And if I'm experiencing the same issue, then maybe others are as well. But just in general, I'm looking forward to the future of folding phones. This is a small step for compact folding phone, but I think it is a huge step for mankind with the uh, develop with the fully functional out of display for these smaller phones. Look forward to the budget variant coming out later this year at roughly eight hundred dollars or so. So at least the price range is going in the right direction. Unfortunately, that eight hundred dollar variant will not have the full screen. But we will slowly get there. Sacrifices have to be made for the lower price range, so I totally get it. But just in general, with this phone, you're getting a lot of high-end specs. Just refresh rate. Typically, a lot of the Galaxy uh, S23 Ultras out there, all the high-end phones, you see 120 hertz refresh rate is the standard. I believe this one goes up to 165 hertz or something. I'm not a big high refresh rate guy, so I don't really notice all the frame drops or anything like that. Even at 60 hertz, I'm fine with using my smartphone that way. It doesn't really bother me. But I know for some people, they get really picky and notice all that. So with this phone, you're getting a super high refresh rate, getting a decent battery. Battery will last me anywhere from 9 to 10 hours a day, depending if I'm using the phone heavily. And if I'm not under light usage, I get 15 hours. So full day battery life, I wake up at 6 a.m. It can last me till 9 p.m. or 3 p.m. So it all depends on how much or little I use my phone. Screen on time is always a weird stat that I don't know, people can play around with the spec, have the screen on all day, just watch YouTube, get nine hours of battery life. And that's how long the phone is going to work. And the people may just have the phone closed all day, but it's still going to die on its own and have zero hours of screen on time. Screen on time is very subjective, so don't get too caught up in that. People always posting random screenshots of their screen on time on Reddit to say, oh, I have 10 hours of screen on time on with my Galaxy S23, but you never know what they're doing in the background using the phone at the lowest setting, airplane mode on. There's so many different factors, but the biggest thing you need to worry about is just the overall battery life, and that can range anywhere from 9 to 15 hours, and that is pretty standard, maybe just slightly above average for a lot of smartphones, so don't get caught up on screen on type stats. Gaming on this phone works fine as well. I don't really do heavy gaming. I play Pokemon Go, I do Pokemon trading card game. It is not not very intensive, just a little flick here, a little scroll there, a little dragon here and there. It does the job for me, but some people do heavy gaming with the race cars and all that crazy action games, that's not for me. Light gaming is fine, I don't really do anything crazy. Oh, another thing that I did notice that the flashlight on the Motor Racer Plus is not as bright as my Galaxy S20. Uh, just like this more I wanted to point out, very minor, but the only reason I noticed is I had a blackout yesterday and then I was using the flashlight in a moto and it's just slightly dimmer compared to my Galaxy S20. I mean, it's not going to change your life or anything, but who knows, in some cases you might want a uh, brighter light. But let me know what you guys think of a Moto Razr Plus and this brand new functioning auto display. And if you guys are going to get it or not, or wait till the Z Flip 5 is announced. I personally will wait a little bit and then see all the options that are available. But if you already pulled the trigger, that's fine too. Let me know what your experience has been so far and you have any additional questions for me. There's always going to be a new phone coming out, so you can't really wait forever. Just in general, anytime a new phone comes out, it's got to be small changes anyway. No new phone's ever going to come out with any game changing features anymore that's going to blow you away. Although I would argue this year the auto display on this small compact phone is a game changing feature for flipping phones in general. So good job Motorola there for staying relevant against an uh, uphill fight with Samsung and their folding phone dominance. You might notice that this video I didn't really go in depth into any like the specs or anything and realities. These specs don't really change that much from year to year. They just slap a new number at the end, call it a newer chip. But this one year old chip is performing just fine. My, my Galaxy S20 from three years ago is still fast and smooth as ever. So don't get caught up with all these specs, make a pixel. They never really tell the full story. I speak more from experience so far. It has been an awesome experience with the Motorola Razr Plus 2023. And I can't recommend it enough if you don't mind spending $1,000 on it or if you can get it cheaper. But yeah, 
And with all folding phones, the crease is still there. So if you're waiting for that to go away, don't expect it to happen anytime soon. You're gonna notice when you're scrolling around, there's gonna be a little bump. If you're using a bright white display in the back, you're gonna see a little mine, but if the screen is dark, you won't really notice it. My eyes personally adjust, it doesn't really bother me on a day-to-day -day basis. Another thing is the phone doesn't always open up fully. <laughs> So you kind of have to give a little push to flatten it out. So there are a little small quirks like that here and there, but I just chuckle at it and just enjoy the phone for what it is and just have fun with the phone. If you're looking for something new, refreshing, not safe and boring like those standard Galaxy and iPhones, this is the phone to get. Don't get me wrong, I love Galaxies, I love iPhones. They are the most safe and reliable, best smartphone, best batteries that you can get. But with this phone, you're gonna be gambling, going on a little bit of a roller coaster ride. Oh, and one more thing, the Motor Razor Plus only has three years of software update compared to the typical four years in Samsung's. Another thing to consider if you want to keep these phones for the long run, and another reason to wait a little bit for the Z Flip 5 to come out. But you plan to get a new phone every two years or so, it doesn't really matter anyways, so just way out on your circumstances. Okay. This is the end of the video. I'll end it now before I keep rambling on with one more thing. I have so many thoughts on this phone. But please remember to like and subscribe if you enjoyed this video and found some value. Remember to check out my other daily vlogs if you haven't already. And see you guys over there.